risk for life on habitable planets from super flares of their host stars. That means that your star flares so much that you're dead. Could that be happening here every 12,500 years? Well, this video is for you. And we're here to show you that that is completely possible. The reason being is that a huge lion's roar super flare seen from Japan should be a wake-up call for Earthlings. Now, new Japanese telescope detects immense super flare on new by, nearby star. This star is not that nearby. It's 16 light years away, but yet we digress. The cold, dark chaos of space is filled with mystery. Fortunately, the ways in which we can peer into the midst of the void are increasing and now include Kyoto University's 3.8 meter Samyo telescope, which is showing us some amazing effects. In fact, that most stars M class super flare. Now, Kyoto Universe scientists observe huge super flare from a red dwarf star 16 light years away. It's true. We have the paper. Optical and X-ray observations of stellar flares on an active M dwarf AD Leonis with the semi telescope scat next and ultra. I mean, that is a mouthful. Who would ever read that? No one. But we report on a multi wavelength monitoring observation of the M dwarf flare at AD Leonis in semi telescope 6150 to 793 Angstrom scat spectrum. Uh, I can't even say it, but it's a boom. And what they saw was a sun unlike any sun ever before. Well, you're looking at our sun during solar max, almost smoking cracks, but solar flares are possible from any sun. And what we've learned in recent decades is that M-class solar flares are way more possible, prominent, and expressive than ever before. We've determined that there are dozens of suns, stars, in our galaxy that regularly emanate flares way bigger than our own. And what does that mean for you and I? Well, it means that the Kyoto University scientist super flare observation is predictive of what we should see here on our planet. That the op X-ray observations of stellar flares on local stars are very similar to our own. Now, these super flares have been reported on our own planet to occur after solar minimums, grand solar minimums, during the last one in 1859, which was the end of the Maunder minimum, we saw a huge super flare. It was the Carrington event. We saw a super flare after the centennial minimum in the early 1900s, which may be larger than the Carrington event. We don't know. The lack of information is leading to the excitation of this information. So if you're listening now, you're one of the people that is trying to glean new facts based on old paradigms. And those paradigms are the fact that the information has been hidden from you from your entire life. Now, it is our supposition that these flares are regular, episodic, and periodic, just like every other climatological change on Earth. They are forced by space weather. They're not forced by you. Man has nothing to do with it. We're inconsequential. If we were to put up this, the Earth up here on this map, it would be just barely a millimeter or two. So you can see the effects of what's actually happening in our solar system relative to the consensus observation of mainstream scientists. Nothing could be further from the truth as to what is actually happening on our planet. Our sun is a dynamic producer of global quiescence. Now, what I mean by that is during solar maximum like this, what you're seeing here is the sun provides at optimum heat and quiescence on the planet. And for humans, that means we receive maximum 
support through the growth of food and warmth. We don't need extra clothes. We don't need extra processes. Food is growing in the forest. But when this baby shuts down or when major solar flares affect the planet, well, that could perturb the grid. That could break down the society and the information flow that you're used to. Your iPhone, your email, your Gmail, etc. Googling it will be impossible if something like this whips towards us in the near future, which is predicted to do. Who knew? Well, if you've been watching this channel, you know about solar dynamics and that the last time this happened was back in 2010. And we have a, quite a few years to wait for it, 2025, 26, for a similar sun. But that's not necessary. All we need is one coronal mass ejection to come towards us during our waning magnetosphere and its boom time, kids. And what the Japanese research proves is that stars like ours, M-class, super flare is inevitable. Now, the Kyoto Universe scientists deserve a golden star for this report because they're one of the few people to go out on a limb, tell us the truth about the future of our future. One which enlists increasing cosmic rays due to a waning magnetosphere, waning sun in the grand solar minimum, other effects leading us into what paleoclimatologists like myself have called the new paradigm, the societal flux, the end of the empire. Are you preparing? I am. I'm learning how to grow food in a zone where growing food is impossible. And you know what I know? That the impossible is always possible. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when we're about to get super flared. During a waning magnetosphere, this will result in frying of the grid in certain portions of the U.S. and worldwide. We'll report on it as it occurs in the coming years. Are you prepared? Do you know how to grow your own food? We're entering into Solar Cycle 25. It's anyone's guess where we will go. But according to the information we've been sharing, you better be prepared. And that's a boom to knowledge. Share this with like-minded individuals. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thank you to all of our one-time donors, our Patreons. And get growing. Because there's no knowing about the future. The only facts we know is that the narrative being fed to you is false. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a false narrative that is your life. Be safe. We love you. Subscribe to the channel. Share this with like-minded people. That's boom.